go get him again. Hey everybody, welcome to the Robes Away channel. My name is Mark. If you are a returning to the channel, welcome back. If you're new here, please don't hesitate to subscribe and say hello in the comments section. Today is Sunday. You know what that means? Sampling Sample Sunday. And I absolutely love Sundays just because I get to experience a brand new release. Today's sample is on the expensive brand of Friedrich Mall, but this is from their higher echelon line, this one called Dawn. Now this is one of many of the Desert Gems collection that I have sampled. Um, there's already one on my channel right now. If you haven't checked it out, I did do a uh, sampling samples on the moon from the same line. Please go check that one out if you haven't. And uh, what's coming up next is the night. So keep it tuned in and I'll give you my thoughts on all those fragrances. So. Now let's go under the hood uh, for this particular release and let's take a look at some stats on this one. It was released back in 2018. Uh, Concentrations Eau de Parfum. The nose behind this, All-Star Perfumier. Um, of course, Frédéric Mal utilizes some, some of the best noses in the game. This one called Carlos Benin. Uh, major notes to my nose. Um, these fragrances, of course, from the Desert Gems, um, very complex in their own way. Um, I feel personally the major notes in this particular release would have to be the incense, the labdanum, and the oud. So let's get to sniffing. Now I'm wearing Dawn as my scent of the day, but my little sample still has a little bit left into it. And I am going to remind myself of the introduction now and just drain my little sample. So there it goes. Oh, ah, she's a beauty. The opening of Dawn did the same to me as the moon. I know a storm was brewing and I was not wrong. Now, it, it's not super challenging. Actually, the complete opposite. Once you get into the dry down, there are challenging parts depending on how far you are in your journey. But Dawn never felt challenging to me. Just a solid release to my nose. The first thing that hits me here is the cheesy oud. It will give you that cheesiness that many higher end ouds can give you depending on the region of the oud, of course, and the type of oud that they're utilizing. It's a little anabolic. Think cumin-like spice, um, that type of anabolic type feel, but the volume of this dramatically tones down um, so much that you'll have to search for it within the dry down. It's still there, um, which is truly magnificent on how it still makes an impact on the scent as a whole, but it really isn't big nor bold after the sudden hit. So you do get hit with it and you kind of, you know, if you give it time on your skin, you're gonna miss it. It's just gonna go away. So at this point, the oud anamolics, um, anamolic facets retreat to the back end of the scent and give way to, in my personal opinion, the star of the show, which is the incense. The incense is one, if not the pillar in this release. It brings a certain calmness to the scent, a warmth. And as funny as this sounds, actually even a little smoothness to it. The incense is as realistic and churchy as they come. Think some of the best church-based fragrances with incense that you can think of. You know, the, the cheapest one I can think of that is ultra realistic always goes back to Avignon by Comme des Garçons. I feel like that one is one of the best in the game. Pound pound to pound cost versus quality. I still think CDG makes the best incense, churchy incense in the game. So I would put this incense. Now this portion of Dawn, now it just doesn't have that, but this portion of it, I put it against the top tier incenses in the game. Now top tier incense scents don't go for this kind of price, I'll be honest, that's another story, uh, but that is, again, up to your wallet, not up to me. Now, the realistic incense gives me a coldness to the fragrance that really makes me think of a church, an old church, honestly, with cold brick 
as you're stepping around the church. Um, not cold tiled, but brick under your feet. Dusty old pews. Um, there's a woody aspect in this release, so it goes really well with that imagery. There's some ash on the ground a little bit. Cold smoke from the incense being snuffed out, but also new incense being burned at the same time. Um, all that imagery is coming through at the start of this release. It's ashy, it's dusty. There's a woody aspect to the release too. The incense as the pillar will stay throughout. You're not gonna lose one beat of the incense. It is gonna continue to go through hour after hour, just continuing to give you that complex imagery. And going back to Avignon, it really gives me the whole imagery of a churchy incense. It just gives me the pews and the candles and the ash, just everything that you would think of. The oud, again, backs up this darkness. And I think that's where um, you would have to you can't really compare this to an Avignon because Avignon only has that portion. This thing has a lot more going through it, especially the Oud. Um, the Oud backs this darkness, but less of a pillar from you know that initial start. Now spices are coming through with the incense, and um, which I get at times a cumin-like appeal at times with some peppery bite, definitely some cardamom. Um, but with the pepper honestly being the most dominant one of the spices. The rose in this scent is actually quite minor. You get, you get bits and pieces of it and a good flicker of it at times, but never really was a central piece of Dawn. Now let's move on to the heart of the release. And into the heart, it shows itself... Um, it shows the pillar, of course, of incense, but now it's paired with another pillar, which is the labdanum, giving its um, familiar, sweet, ambery, almost leathery touches. Now the olibanum, the labdanum play well together. They, they play nice in the, in the sandbox <laughs> and they share the spotlight with the woody backbone. So those are your big pillars uh, at this uh, portion. Now the spices, the rose and the oud, they continue this flickering um, in the backdrop, coming in, coming out, and kind of just showing their faces here and there to give more complexity to the scent. And they do that at random. And that's where I felt like when I was testing out this release, it just never was the same. And it keeps the user interested, which is something that I absolutely love. When I'm spending big dollars, especially on a darker scent, sometimes all I want is, let's say, a smoky scent, and that's all I want. From hour one to eight, just give me that simple, do it for me, and I'm happy. But in this particular um, release, what I want to see is not just that. I don't want just simplistic. I know you can do it, but I want more. And it's almost like a puzzle. Pieces coming in and out. Some don't fit, but they you play around and they fit. Um, it really is a, a, a great little journey. Dawn is a very dry scent. And the more time it's on the skin, the drier it gets. But it also has a faint glow from the amber. It almost, and I'm gonna maybe blow your mind, maybe not. Um, it almost seems like Dawn picked up, funnily enough, where the night left off, pun intended. I mean, really, it feels like the night was darker, but this is the peak of dawn. So more this scent is on my skin, the more this ambery glow creeps up slowly, almost like the sun rising. Maybe I blew your mind, maybe you're just laughing at me. It's fine, it's a neat trick which I, I don't know if it was meant to be a play on from the night, uh, but it surely off this sample made me think of that. I mean, it just felt like it had some darkness and then that ambery glow kind of gives you like when the sun comes up um, that orange, the colors here talking about orange, mostly brown and black from the start and throughout the fragrance. And then a ray of orange runs through dawn, kind of like the sun coming up. I think I'm being corny right now. But anyway, uh, some minor things I did want to mention prior to ending the sampling samples is I felt some minor, and I mean minor, you really need to dig things in this release. The first thing was earthiness. Um, there's some earthy green pieces here. 
Um, think moss, earth, between the brick laying on the ground near you. So you're walking on the brick, the cold stone, and there's some mossiness, of course, some greenness um, in between the cracks here near your feet. There's also a certain spice here in the dry down that I can't pinpoint. Um, that had some real bite to it, um, but it was in the back end. And when I dig my dose deeper into the scent, it made me think of the color red. So having a bottle of this, now I'm gonna start delving more into this release and think, what is this? There's also a strange polish-like note here, like a peel in the scent, like a, it, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of a scent that I did a sampling samples on, uh, Bow Makers from DS and Durga had like a, uh, a polish-like appeal, almost like someone tried to remodel the old pews a little bit, put some polish on it. Uh, a few spaces away from me. And that little quirkiness, that little weirdness is what frack heads are looking for to, to make a fragrance a little more unique. And that was something that I noticed in this release and something that I'm gonna keep my nose on um, once I get more deeper into this release to do a test drive and then a full-fledged review. Overall, Dawn is excellently blended. And that is one of the main factors when I'm reviewing something that is you know, three, four, five hundred and more blend uh, comes into play. And it's really important, which I knew coming in that it would be. Um, they wouldn't be, you know, utilizing an all-star pet for me. Frédéric Mall has an excellent reputation. So does Monsieur Benin. It, this fragrance won't appeal to many noses especially at that price point as people will pay big money for an oud this is more of an incense than a nude but that's okay but i can see the other side of the coin saying that they can get bits and pieces of the dawn here and there in other scents that are valued to a hundred to five hundred dollars instead of what this will cost I feel what was available here to the nose in his talent versus the idea here that Benim did an excellent job in this particular release. I may be the only reviewer that is putting this and the night together in a review and saying there's a flawless imagery to uh, this Desert Gems lineup. And going from a dark night to a start of the prayer day during dawn with the ambery glow in the back end, I don't know. But in my personal opinion, another excellent Desert Gem release, in my opinion. And it just gets the wheels rolling here for me that um, when's our next one? Because it's been a while since they've released a new one for this line. I'd like another one. Uh, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself because the night is next for me to do a sampling samples. Let's get into... Seasons, Day Night versus Seven Performance. Um, seasons, I feel like Fall would be the best for Dawn. I feel like that, the orange, the browns, and the black. Um, great for winter, of course, it's a darker scent. But I feel like these, especially in Canada, when the maple leaves are, are, are going down, you got those different colors and you're going outside. I feel like this release will be perfect for that. Spring, you know, the start of spring for me, there's still snow on the ground in Canada. Still, Dave, shoot, there's still snow on the ground and we are in april may right now and the cusp of it and uh yeah it's kind of scary but uh this is still good at this point dare night i feel like this is more of a nighttime scent um versatility average um again some people say eh, it's a little too daring for an average i feel again it depends i think the person that would be buying this would be in the journey like i am and if you're in the journey like I am, this is a mood-based release. It, it basically is based on your mood. If you feel like wearing it, wear it. Um, and I don't think there's much restrictions to it. Uh, performance, um, these Desert Gems perform. And this is, again, longevity is 12 plus hours on my skin with excellent projection. It's not beast, but it's excellent. It, it's, performance is good. There's no complaints, no complaints here. So at the end of the day, Dawn, this is, um, what can I say? What can I finish this one off? This isn't about oud. And a lot of people do talk about ouds in these releases. Well, it's a bit about oud. Um, it, it really is, I can't say it's a pillar in the release, but it's always there. Um, I feel like it engulfs the user up top and then it just goes, okay, you guys, you got the show, labbed in them, all about them, go. Now, I feel like this is an incense-based fragrance to me, personally. 
Now there's many amazing incense based scents on the market and this goes against them. It, it matches against the best. But what sets this apart is the complex, the complexity that these other incense based fragrances don't have, which includes notably, even though it plays a, notably the oud, even though it plays a minor part to attracting your nose to it, it's the oud. The oud really is always there and always gives you that, I'm not gonna say funk, it's not that funky, but it really just piques your interest even though it's in the back end. It's huge in the opening, drops off a cliff almost, but it's the subtle touches that the oud keeps giving throughout the life of the fragrance. The blending of it with the primary notes is, is excellent. Um, the incense is great. The ambery glow, glow, of course, the labdanum, the resinous uh, portions, perfect. Um, so this fragrance in a nutshell, resins, wood, smoke, spices, animalics, it's all there. It's all what a fragrance Ted wants. Just an all around solid set. Um, I could see price tag being no, you know, you know, if you want an incense based fragrance, there is some that are perfectly fine, like as cheap as Avignon is from Comme des Garçons. Um, if you're looking at this at face value versus just, I just like the incense portion of this release, everything else is kind of muddled or you don't like it. Um, you'd be glad to pay the Come to Gelsen fragrance and totally forget about this one. I could see that, uh, but it's an all around great release from the brand, the nose, everything. I'm happy with this one. This is a great release. I got to give it a score because sampling samples score. <laughs> well, uh, Desert Gems are doing well on my channel. This is going to get a 10 out of 10 from me. Um, I feel like the wild card is the Oud. Um, in this release, even though it's, I would say, almost third or fourth in, in as far as being importance. Um, well, no, not in importance, but as in power, I would say. But as important as it is, it's probably third. You know, the labdanum is important, and so is the olibanum, um, which is the primary. But the oud is still a big part of the release. So 10 bottles out of 10 for this one. Perfect score. Welcome to the Perfect 10 Club. Um, as far as sampling samples go, now it's up to the big boys to start going into test drive and doing a full-fledged review. Is it going to continue to hold that 10 score? That's where we're going to see once I fully test this thing. But off off the little sample, she's good. She's magnificent. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube.